All right. Hi, everyone. How is everyone doing this afternoon? My name is Ali. I'm an educator here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And thank you so much for joining us for our Aquarium Online Academy. Now, this is our final one of the day, so I'm so excited because it's one of my favorite topics. We are going to be talking about seals, sea, lion and sea lions, and conservation and what we can do for these animals. Uh, so I, I'm inviting you to participate. Uh, you can either take notes, you can talk out loud, you can yell at the computer screen, or uh, you can text us to this number right below. It's 562-286-1838. I have my friend Alicia over at the computer ready to take all of your texts or comments um, or questions. And then I have my friend Kaya behind the monitor here who's controlling everything cool you see behind here. Uh, now, in case you're watching it after when it's not live and you still have questions or comments you'd like to share with us, definitely do so. And we have an email down here and that is live at lbaop.org. Org. Alrighty, so we are going to be talking today about seals sea lions and conservation. So seals and sea lions. I'm sure many of you have seen a seal or a sea lion maybe at the beach before, maybe even on a whale watch, uh, maybe out, out in the ocean uh, somewhere you've probably seen one. Those seals and sea lions are part of a group of animals called pinnipeds. Can everyone say that with me? It's kind of a funny word. Pinniped. Pinniped means flipper or feather footed. So there is actually a third member to the pinniped family. So we have seals, we have sea lions. Oh, there's a turtle behind me. <laughs> Just to let you know, this is a live, oh, he's going right into the camera. He, this is a live feed uh, actually from our shark lagoon outside. Uh, we don't have a live feed right now in our seal and sea lion exhibit, but we do have one at Shark Lagoon and a couple others. So I encourage you to check those out. Uh, so that was kind of funny. We got to see a turtle, <laughs> uh, but we have pinnipeds, seal, sea lions, and there's one more other animal that belongs to that group. Any thoughts what that other animal could be? It kind of looks like, to me, it looks more like a sea lion but it has two big things coming out of its face. <laughs> two big tusks. That's right, walrus. Walrus is the final member of the pinniped family. Again, th that stands for flipper or feather footed. So while we kind of look at things today, uh, try to keep in mind flipper or feather footed so you can make some observations about they're flippers uh, because they're definitely named that for a reason. Now, again, we are going to be talking about seals and sea lions, and they are marine mammals. So what exactly does that mean? Well, okay, so they're a mammal, just like us, but marine means that they live in the ocean. So a couple differences there because they live in the water a lot of the time but they still breathe air. Uh, so we'll put up a picture of a sea lion or a seal behind me. Oh, perfect. One of my favorites. So uh, you can see um, these are our lovely sea lions here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And yes, they do breathe air. They have their nice noses here, but they can poke out of the water, out of the surface of the water to get a nice breath. Now sea lions can actually hold their breath around 12 minutes. So they can actually hold their breath much longer than we can. And why do you think they'd want to hold their breath longer? Hmm. Yeah, maybe to chase after food. Maybe if they're swimming away from a predator. Yeah, that, what's really cool is that they can actually close their nose. Does everyone see their little nose right here? It actually can open and close so they don't let water inside of their nose. So that's one really uh, good way to uh, know that it's a mammal. Again, it does breathe air, but that is not the only thing that makes a mammal a mammal. Other things that you can see actually in this photo is fur. They have fur. Now I know it's a little tricky to see in this picture, but all of this kind of shininess here, that is all fur. 
So I like to think of it, uh, if you have ever given a dog a bath and you have pet that dog when it's all wet, that's kind of what a seal or a sea lion feels like, at least to me. Their, their fur is kind of coarse, uh, so it's a little rough, but uh, that's kind of what it feels like to me. So they have all of that fur all over their body. Now that fur helps them to stay warm. Our water is a little chilly off of our coast here in Southern California, and they can live in much colder places as well. So that fur helps them to stay nice and warm. Now every year, they go through what's called a molt. Now, a molt is when they shed off that top layer of uh, skin and fur, and they get a whole new brand new layer. Now, it does take a couple weeks. Uh, sometimes they look a little patchy in places, or maybe the fur came off a little, a little bit before uh, fur right next door, uh, but they get a nice new coat every single year. Again, only once a year. So why do you think that's important for them to get a new coat? Why can't they just have the same fur their whole lives? Hmm. Well, I kind of think of it as if, if I wore the same exact outfit every single day for a year, and I did all my normal activities, it would probably get a little dirty, it'd probably get some holes in it, uh, wouldn't be as protective and maybe not as warm. And so that is a really good reason why they go through a molt once a year. So again, we talked about air, right? They're marine mammals, they breathe air, they have lungs, they also have fur. Now they also have live birth. Now we are so lucky at the Aquarium of the Pacific because we have actually uh, had a baby born here pretty recently. She just turned two years old, uh, just in April. So she's just over two years old and her name is Kaya, uh, just like our friend Kaya who is in our studio here with us. And this is our baby seal. So this is Kaya and of course they do have live birth. A seal or a sea lion, uh, they don't lay eggs and sit on it <laughs> like a chicken or anything like that. Again, they're mammals, just like us, which means that they do have live birth. Now, um, she was pretty small when she was first born. She was, I believe, uh, around 20 pounds, 25 pounds. Um, but of course, they, they get big pretty quick. Now, another characteristic that makes a mammal a mammal is babies that they drink their mother's milk. Right when Kaya was born, she didn't go straight to eating nice big fish. Actually took a while for her to kind of start learning how to eat fish. So of course, uh, she did drink her mother's milk. We might have a picture of that here somewhere. Uh, we'll try to find that for you, but she did, did drink her mother's milk uh, just on her belly. So uh, you guys uh, might notice that when uh, when that picture comes up here in a second. Now, their milk is very, very fatty. They wanna be, be putting on that layer of blubber to help them stay warm. Oh, here's another really good picture of Kaya. Oh, here's her learning how to eat some of her favorite foods now. Uh, but they wanna put on a nice big layer of blubber. That helps them to stay warm because although they have this fur, it's not necessarily enough. So they have that nice layer of fat that also helps them to stay warm. Now, when Kaya was born, she wasn't born with that huge layer of fat. So she wants to put that on pretty quickly and that's why their milk is so fatty. Now, seals, they don't nurse for very long. It'll kind of surprise you actually, it surprises me. They only nurse for four to six weeks. That's only about a month, month and a half. And that's normal for seals. So she was weaned pretty quickly from her mother. Whereas sea lions, on the other hand, uh, even though they're so closely related, very different. Of course, they are born live, being mammals, but they can nurse uh, for several months. So very different, uh, very different ways that they, that they care for their babies. Again, awesome sea lions right here. All right, uh, so the last and final way to know if it is a mammal is their temperature inside.
So they are warm blooded, which means that they have a pretty steady temperature. So I kind of think of it, if I were to take sea lion's temperature right now inside, it would be the same temperature as if I took the sea lion and put him in the snow and took his temperature there. His insides are going to stay the same. It doesn't really fluctuate, it stays pretty steady. Whereas cold blooded, it fluctuates a lot based off of the environment that you're in, whether it's really cold or really hot. All right, so those, oh, here is, speaking of which, here is a awesome seal sunning itself. So uh, sometimes when they wanna warm up a little bit, they'll lay on rocks and they'll just lay out and get all the sun uh, that they want. So you actually will probably see that more towards the afternoon time here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, sometimes all of our animals are up on one on one beach just taking in all of that sun another thing that sea lions do actually while we're on this topic that is really fun to watch for is sea lions will actually float around with a flipper out of the water they can float around just like this it kind of looks a little silly like they're waving high or something like that but that is actually a form of thermoregulation. Uh, so it actually helps them to heat up and cool down. Uh, so look out for that uh, if you're ever watching a sea lion meter or out in the ocean. Now, speaking of seals and sea lions here and out in the ocean, seals and sea lions, sometimes we use that word kind of interchangeably. Yeah, but they're actually really different animals. And we're going to learn right now how to tell them apart so you can be a professional if you see one of these uh, maybe on, on a dock or maybe on a buoy or again maybe at a facility just like the Aquarium of the Pacific. So very first thing we're going to look at is probably the easiest thing to see from far away. And this is just for the kind that we have here. So we have California sea lions and harbor seals. And you'll find those off of our coast here in Southern California. So I do want to make that, uh, make that point, and I'll go into that a little more in a second. Because California sea lions uh, have this nice chocolate brown coloration. So their color is the first thing that really catches my eye. That their color is so different because sea lions, they're one color. And now let's bring up a picture of a harbor seal. Oh, perfect. Here is a picture of a harbor seal. So what do you notice is different? Yeah, the harbor seal has more spots. It's more cookies and cream. It's called mottled. That's mottled coloration that you see there. Now, I did bring up that I wanted to let you know that that is not the case for all seals. Some seals can have a smooth chocolate brown coloration just like a sea lion. Uh, maybe we have a picture of an elephant seal or, or any other kind of seal for that matter. Uh, so uh, we can bring one of those up here in a second. Oh, here's a sea lion thermoregulating out of the water here. It's this, oh, this is a fur seal, perfect, this is a fur seal. So you can actually see, uh, see pretty well that they have a solid chocolate brown coloration. Awesome, thank you for that, Kaya. So, it's not the case that all seals have that kind of cookies and cream color, but if you're off here off of our coast, uh, these are pretty common here, so that's a really great way to tell them apart. Well, that is not the only way to tell apart a seal from a sea lion because, again, color doesn't always work. So we have other ways as well, such as their ears. All right, so I'm going to let you observe this beautiful sea lion here. What do you notice about his ears? Do you notice the two little flaps on either side? They're really little. They're pretty cute. Well, sea lions have external ear flaps. That means that they have external ears, kind of like we do. They're not inside necessarily, whereas seals Let's bring up a picture of a harbor seal here. Let me, uh, let's see what you notice about the seals because they're a little bit different. So let's pull up a picture here. What do you notice about their ears? 
Yeah, you can't really see them, right? If you look kind of closely, uh, you can't, there's nothing really sticking out. There's not like a little ear flap or anything like that. Oh, perfect view. Thank you, Miss Kaya. Okay, this is great. So this is actually a seal ear, believe it or not, that tiny little hole. Mm -hmm. So they have what's called internal ears. So they can hear perfectly fine, but they don't have external ears like we do or like sea lions do. So again, that's a really great way to tell them apart. Of course, as, as with the color, there's always differences and um, exceptions in the science world, uh, such as that fur seal that we looked at before. You might have noticed it had little tiny ears, uh, but that is an exception to the case of, of what well, is a seal or a sea lion in their name. So uh, for generally, sea lions have external ear flaps, whereas seals do not. They just have tiny little holes behind their eye, uh, like a bird or a dolphin might have. All right, so we talked about two of the ways to tell apart a seal from a sea lion, and there are a couple more. Now, the next way we can tell them apart is by using our ears. So if you're ever at the beach and you hear a lot of noise coming from, uh, say, something that looks like a seal or a sea lion, it's probably a sea lion. They love to make noise. Uh, we don't have any, any uh, recorded audio, but I will do my best. I will try my best to be a sea lion. They go, arr, arr. was that good? I think I got some thumbs up around the office. I think that was pretty good. So that is kind of what a sea lion sounds like. Whereas a seal, well, harbor seals aren't very loud. They kind of do this. They make that noise. <laughs> well, they're pretty quiet. So if you hear that noise, you're probably a little too close to that animal uh, because, again, they are pretty quiet. Again, that's for harbor seals. Some other seals, such as elephant seals, can actually be uh, be pretty noisy. Oh, and here's a walrus. Yes. So uh, depending on the animal, of course, they can be pretty noisy. But if you are off the coast here in Southern California and you hear a loud barking noise, it is most likely a sea lion because they are very, very vocal. Now, the last way to tell them apart, which I actually think is probably the best way because uh, there's lots of exceptions to a lot of the rules we just talked about, but this one is pretty spot on, and that is their flippers. Their flippers or how they move. Uh, so we can pull up a picture of a seal or a sea lion, and I want you to take a look at their flippers. Now, what exactly is a flipper? Well, a flipper is an appendage that has bones in it. So most of the time they're uh, kind of on their sides. Those are pectoral flippers or at the back here. So you can see on our harbor seal, they have tiny little short front flippers. Do you see those? Actually, if you look close, do you see her fingernails? Yeah, seals have fingernails. Isn't that cool? Sometimes we even have to cut them, uh, just like just like you might trim your dog's fingernails. And so, actually, pretty cool to see that up close. Seals have really, really short front flippers. Whereas, take a look at a sea lion. What kind of flippers does a sea lion have? Hmm, pretty long ones, huh? Much longer. Than, than the seal we looked at. And if you look really closely, uh, you can't see any fingernails because they don't have any. So it's actually a really cool way. Uh, if you have that really good look at them, uh, sea lions, they don't have any fingernails. Now I'll give you an, uh, just a, a backstory on what is happening right here. What is this thing in our sea lion's mouth? So we like to have our animals participate in something called enrichment.
Enrichment is giving our animals something to stimulate their minds, their bodies, because they're not out uh, in the ocean ca trying to catch animals at, uh, as their food, uh, but we still want to make sure they're using their brains uh, in a really healthy way. So we're constantly teaching them new things, working on old things. And this right here is actually a very, very fun behavior. And that is because this right here is a paintbrush. Yeah, did you know sea lions could paint? It, they're beautiful, beautiful, very abstract, uh, but they can actually paint. And they can dip their paintbrush in, in a color that we have out for them, and they can put it all over the canvas. So that's, <laughs> that's what's going on here. So their flippers are very long, and seal flippers are very short. Now, that doesn't seem to make a huge difference so far, but it does when they move. All right, so when they are moving on land, seals, because their short, short front flippers are so short, they aren't able to kind of stand up and walk on all fours. They don't have that capability. So they actually inch around. So actually, in addition to having short front flippers, their uh, hip bone back here is fused. So they have a fused hip bone, which means it can't really move very well. So if, if they got, even if they were able to get on all fours, they wouldn't really be able to walk around too well. So they have a different way of moving. So if you see this is a really good indication that it is a seal. I'm gonna have you guys look at this. Uh, this is one of our seals moving just straight forward. It's not a, a trained behavior. This is how seals move. Let's take a look. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, very, very cute. Look how much air he's getting. Oh man. <laughs> awesome. So you can see, oh, and it's going to speed up here in just a second too. So you can see it kind of in, in, Current time, perfect. So you can see they move very similar to an inchworm. Or if you've ever tried to do the worm on the floor, mm -hmm, I have. Uh, he's much better at it than I am. <laughs> so we can uh, pause that real quick. Awesome. So they inch around like a big fuzzy inchworm. Whereas sea lions on land, what, what do you think? Do you think they inch around like a big fuzzy inchworm or do they do something different? Yeah, they move a lot different. They do have those long front flippers, but they also have a rotating hip bone, which means they are able to kind of move around a little more. So if you look at our California sea lions, they are actually able to walk on all fours, kind of like a dog. Uh, not, not quite maybe as graceful, but they can walk on all fours. So. If you do see them on land, that's a really good way to tell them apart. However, they also swim very differently. Oh, perfect. You can see them kind of moving their, um, moving that rotating hip bone around. Perfect. Right over here. Now they move differently in the water as well. Now sea lions with these long front flippers, they use them almost like wings. So they use those uh, to propel themselves and push themselves through the water. And they use their little hind flippers here. The hind flippers are the ones right in the back. They use those to steer. So they actually push themselves with their front and steer with their behind. So actually we have a video of them swimming. So go ahead and make observations. What do you notice about them swimming? Yeah, when they pick up speed, they really push with those front flippers. So, of course, sea lions can move like this. Seals, on the other hand, do you think same or different? Yeah, exactly. They are a little bit different. So, seals, actually, uh, they, don't, they don't have those big front flippers to kind of push themselves through the water. So, they do something else. With those little short front flippers, they steer, steer through the water, kind of like a little airplane, if you will. And they use their hind flippers, the, the ones right on the back, 
to help them move and propel through the water. Now they use those flippers side to side. So if you see an animal that looks like a seal or a sea lion, it's using its flippers side to side, that's a really good indication that that is in fact a seal. So they do move very differently. Uh, let's see, Oop, this might be a video here. Maybe we'll get to see, oh, there's a seal underwater. Okay, let's see. Oh, you can kind of see them swimming in the background there. I think they're more curious at the camera <laughs> than they are. But you can really get a good look at that mottled coloration, those colors. Oh, nice. And you, oh, as that swam away, did you see it go side to side? Yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit different than the sea lions. So we've talked a lot today about what makes a mammal a mammal. And we just learned some really great ways to tell apart a seal from a sea lion, not only here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, but maybe out in the ocean as well. Now, speaking of out in the ocean, our animals do need our help. I want you to take a second and think, well, what are some threats to seals and sea lions? What do you think they face out in the ocean? Well, some of their threats might be natural. Right? And that is something like predation. So that is completely natural out in the ocean, uh, food webs and such. And you can see this uh, great white shark here. We do have great white sharks off of our coast, along with lots of other different predators. So that is one thing that seals and sea lions do face. But this is, again, natural. That is a naturally occurring thing in the ocean. However, they face some not natural events as well. Any guesses to what I could be talking about? Yeah, so definitely pollution. Pollution is a big one. So if our trash or even things we intended to recycle kind of wash into the water, that might not be good for our seals or sea lions. Even things like nets, if they're left in the water, they can get tangled around seals or sea lions, and if they grow bigger, that net isn't growing any bigger. So that is one thing uh, that they do have to deal with. So that's one thing that we do wanna kind of bring up and talk about how we can better help these animals by really making sure that our trash goes in the right bin and we don't litter uh, even on the beach, but even, even in inland uh, when you're miles away from the beach because everything really does lead back to the ocean like storm drains. So that's one thing uh, that they do face. But another thing is competition for food. Now, competition with who? Well, I mentioned some things are natural, right? But some things uh, we humans cause a little bit more of an impact. So I, what I mean is that overfishing is happening off of our coast and it's we take too much fish out of the ocean that we don't leave enough. Now, of course, that's an issue for fish populations, but why would that be an issue for seals or sea lions? Hmm. Yes, exactly, food. They need fish for food. Those are their favorite things to eat. Uh, they eat a variety of small schooling fish. They can also eat squid. But if we humans take too much of the food out of the ocean, what are our seals and sea lions supposed to do? So that is one more thing we like to bring to light here, how we can help seals and sea lions, those awesome mammals we see off of our coast, is by choosing sustainable seafood. So seafood is a great, a great source of protein for a lot of people around the world. However, there are different ways that it's caught. Some sustainably, some maybe not so much. So uh, when you're at the grocery store or at a restaurant, 
you can ask them, hey, is this, is this a sustainable seafood? And uh, if it is, you know you'll be making a good choice. And if it's not, uh, maybe you can choose something else. So we make sure uh, that there is enough seafood for our animals out in the ocean. But I had so much fun with you all today. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, learning a little bit about seals, sea lions, and of course, the impacts that we have on them and how we can help. Uh, I hope you join us again for another Aqu Aquarium Online Academy. And thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you again.